You've probably seen these symbols before. Um, they, they sort of crop up even, they're hidden in a lot of ways. But sometimes they stand out in front of you and a lot of people may not even notice them. But this particular symbol here, which I call a schematic, or it's like a diagram, or like a plan. And it's, um, it's a bit like a, I've got an old Marshall amp. I love Marshall amps, guitar amplifiers. And when something goes wrong with it, I take it to a technician and he pulls out the schematic, which is the plan on the direction or the flow of the electrons and the neutrons in order to come up with a particular sound or to make the, the combination of the things of the flow of the electrons to create a nice sounding amplifier. And it's that schematic that can only really be read by the technician or the the uh, the, the technician that can that can read the symbols of the schematic in order to understand the flow of the electrons that make that sound come out of the amplifier. And that person that can read the schematic and read the signs of that schematic is the one that understands how that amplifier works if that amplifier plays up or has to be fixed or whatever. Me, I just play the game. I plug the guitar into it, crank it up, and I get a pretty cool sound, of it, sound out of it. And that's thanks to whoever designed that system that makes that sound come out. Now, of course, the Marshall amplifier schematic is sort of pretty complex um, as far as guitar amps go but this amplifier or this schematic or this system or this plan is the same thing it's a simple schematic that actually identifies quite a complex system of governance and a lot of people today are not understanding how the so-called governments have so much power and authority over them and how little authority that they have back or the little amount of rights they have they actually have no rights at all and the whole guts of it the the reality of it all is that the people that thought they were in a common law system where the sovereignty is really held by them and the direction of power over that sovereignty is with the people. But what's happened in this system and in relation to these Masonic systems, these symbols, is that you have been changed from a land-based common law system into a military navy or military water-based system that works and operates in a form of shipping or a military system where you have been turned into a private a private citizen of a foreign administrative ship that administers a thing called a trust territory and if you look at the normal dictionary as we can see here a trust territory is a designated area not particularly of land of, of anything it's just it's a designated jurisdiction where the boundaries of that jurisdiction extend to. And in a case of um, United States or a case of America, uh, sorry, Australia or Canada or Britain or Great Britain, these areas are really known as trust territories. And a trust territory is something that is governed by the United Nations, as you can see here. United Nations Trust Territories were the successors of the remaining League of Nations mandates and came into being when the League of Nations ceased to exist in 1946. All of the Trust Territories were administered through the United Nations Trusteeship Council. And a Trust Territory is, in this case, is a, a layer of jurisdiction that sits over the top of land 
of the real land. And what's happened in the past is that to get the jurisdiction, the jurisdiction of the sea, which is a navy system where once you enter into a ship and you're a crew member on the ship, you don't have any rights. You follow by the statutes or the rules of the ship. So if you are a crew member on a ship, you do as the captain tells you on a ship. But on land, you have this common law right where it's not shipping, you, you're on land and you hold the sovereign power, which is really the birthright to the land. And even on land governments, if you issue your dominion, which is your share of the mineral and energy wealth to a king or a, to a state or to a body, um, then that grant of that power gives you the directive power over that grant of your dominion, which is the mineral, in, in our case of today, where mineral and energy wealth has become so powerful and so wanted and so needed by uh, big corporations around the world, that right, that, that mineral and energy sovereignty belongs to the people. It always has, because it's come, it comes from the birthright of people that are born on a land. So the, what, what sort of has happened is you may believe that this is the case. You believe that you are a man and you are sovereign and you've, your rights to the mineral and energy wealth of land has been granted to a, bor a body. And, and in the old days, it used to be a king or a queen or a sovereign head of state where all the sovereigns basically come together and hand up their sovereignty to one person to administer it. And uh, that in the past, in that situation, has been a king or a queen. Uh, that operates under a company where it's not a corporation, it's a company. The difference between a corporation and a company is basically the company the members of the company reserves its rights in a company to still have directive power over the estate granted to the, the head of state, head of that state. But a corporation is different. The corporation is created by the head of that state and it creates a, um, a, a debtor, a corporate debtor system. And then the corporation, then it employs or creates citizens that are debtors to that corporation. And this is, the, this is what this symbol is all about. This is the one that's found on some of the old Masonic Bibles. And when you start to get your head around this simple schematic, this, um, this plan of how, they, of how they run this system, where they take you from God into man, where the dominion is granted to man. This is the mineral and energy wealth. This is how this system, it's, it's like a devolution from, from God into the debtor, hell, which is the, the dead part of this system. Before I go further with this first, is this system is also found not only on Masonic Bibles, but on some of the Masonic temples. You will notice this. It's known as the, the Star of, of David. But it might also have things to do with Baal or Moloch, which is... Um, Moloch is a satanic god. It's about the sacrifice of the children into the fiery belly of Moloch, into the fiery pits of hell. And the symbol of Moloch is the calf. It's the bull. <laughs> Which is really the Vatican, is Moloch. I'm going to show you where Moloch comes into being in this strange Masonic system. Basically, someone's got to control the sinners. <laughs> and the sinner 
is the debtor. So if you can create a world where we can get the sinners and punish them into being the debtors of a governing system, then for somehow or other, we can justify, justify our rights to punish the sinner and not give him his due worth, <laughs> so to speak. So this system, this is, which has really got, got to do with Zionism. And as you can see here, this is the Z for Zionism. And what, where this comes from is it sort of stems from here. For, with X is a symbol of death. And you'll see this is the, the spot that marks the point of death. So when a bank manager signs you up, signs you up with the sign writing, the sign type of text here. When a bank manager signs you up, he will draw up the contracts for you and he will put a cross on them and he'll, he will say, sign here. <laughs> In actual fact, his cross is already the signature. He signed it for you. But what he's trying to get you to do is countersign it, which means that you become the debtor of the bank because he already signed it by putting his cross on it. So when he makes a mortgage payment and he puts his crosses on it, he's already signed it. <laughs> but lucky, lucky you're not onto it. <laughs> you go and sign it again, which confirms that he is now the creditor where he originally was the debtor of it. And this symbol here, the, the Christ, so it's also a bit like Christ. The reason why it's a symbol of death is because it's the, the, the mark or the spot or the place of your death where Christ dies on the cross. But in Christ's case, Christ sacrificed himself for us. While we're on this subject, dealing with Christ and the signature, I just want to give you this something to really think about the next time you go and sign a contract, whether it be with the government or a banking contract, because the governments are the banks. The US Federal Reserve is the bank of the world, basically of the US dollar and it controls many of the dollars around the world, as well as the Australian dollar. It belongs to the US Federal Reserve. But Christ made a warning, or the, what I should say is the warning of Christ when he died on the cross is a warning that when you sign your name or give an autograph, to a name that is on a banking contract. What's happening on that contract is the death of your Christian name. Because the name on the banking contract or the mortgage or on the electoral roll or any form of police document or government document, the name that's on that document of their document is the property of Moloch or Satan or the administrator. It is not your property, but because of the indoctrination that you've been through and your lack of ability to check and double check what is written in the Bible and also what's written in the dictionaries, as well as the English dictionary and the Black's Law dictionary, you have lost your name. And that's the name that was given to you on your birth certificate very beginning. This is the state birth certificate. This is the certificate that belongs to Moloch or the state. And it gives you a choice of family name and given name. This is also sometimes called Christian name. There are two names given here. On this original document called the certificate of birth or the sticks or the certificate of live birth, only the Christian name exists. So when you think about what's happening with these names and when the bank manager draws this cross 
and says sign on that cross the minute you turn around and do some squiggly thing like that that's the mark and that mark will go to your name that is incorporated with your surname which is the name that belongs to Moloch or Satan or the state or the debtor or it belongs over here into the tree of knowledge because there's your Christian name there that's what identifies the Christian side of this Trinity this is the debtor side the Moloch the sinners the surname and when you autograph where that cross is just think about it is that Christ telling you that by joining and incorporating yourself with the debtor over here with the surname is that the death of the Christ inside you you see everything in the Bible is a symbol it's a symbol of your life of everything that you're going to go through it's a warning of what you must be careful of what you got what you've got to watch out for it's a warning of the world of sign of sin and as you as I've said before the word sign is s i g n and the g is simply the governing of sin it's a Gnostic system it's hidden it's it's an occult and these symbols while we're on that subject of Christ is when you sign the contract under a surname then your true name of the creditor side has died on the very mark where that contract is and then what the bank can do the bankers or the debtors the administrators can do they can always pull that piece of paper out and say no you put your mark on it that's your mark you claim this name you claim the name of the debtor you claim the name of the sinner and within this trinity within this trusteeship you claimed to act over here on the debtor side of that trust and the reason why you are there is you just did not know the symbolism the schematics the the satanic Gnostic system that is behind the system to get you to kill yourself on the cross Christ dies on the cross your Christian name dies on the cross uh, this cross is also these two triangles like this inverted one's a mirror image to the other one and what these triangles these three which is a very powerful thing we all know that triangles in buildings and even you know up in up in here um, a lot of buildings use triangles for strength because a two-way contract is a, a, a contract between two people but when you bring the third party in, in a contract as the administrator of the contract and also as the witness of the contract then the third party entering into that contract makes that contract very powerful because when one tries to bail out of the contract you have two other parties that said no no you can't bail out you said this or you said that so this third party system this these are triangles is a system of uh, creditor debtor and administrator so that's why these two triangles are sitting together but in the in the Bible we have the Old Testament testament means contract we have the New Testament testament means contract so the old the, the Old Testament and the New Testament are two contracts but see Christ said in this one that he said I have not come to do away with the Old Testament I've come to fulfill the system so remember it's not been done away with so the Old Testament is very much as a part or, or it's a it's a crucial element in this 
new contracting system. It's the world of the dead. And what's happening is this, the first contract was God basically, you know, Moses and, and or sorry, God and Adam and the snake or the Vatican, which sets up a basic land law trust where God grants the dominion, which is the mineral and energy wealth which is the sovereignty, which is all of the authority over this equity, which is the earth. So God grants that to man. He says, here, you take that. You can be the first trustee of the whole world. So this world was granted to man as the trustee of the world. What man's done is he probably thought, <laughs> I don't want to be the trustee because being the trustee is being like the debtor the one that has to pay the debts and can only use the, the sovereignty or the power of it in a usufructory system, meaning he cannot make profit from the system, but he's there to look after the system and to, to make sure that um, everything is, well, he had, to, he had to name all the animals, the trees and everything in order to put them in the book because he needed to name something in order to take a, a log of it all. And what he did is he thought, well, I am really don't want to do this. So what he's done is he's then granted the dominion, which is the mineral and energy wealth, to a third party, which is the snake or the Vatican. The Vatican has offered to accept to act as the second trustee or man's first trustee, which sets up the first real trust of this, which is God, man, and the Vatican. Grantor, the debtor, then the debtor becomes the grantor, and we have the second debtor, or the third party. And in law, the third party has no rights. <laughs> Simple as that. If you look, think about a ship, on a ship, there's a passenger, passenger gets onto the ship, there's the captain of the ship, and there's the crew. And what's really basically happened in this ship system, which is this system here, you'll, pro you'll find that this first um, contract, which is the Old Testament, is God, man, and the Vatican then the second part of this system here is where the Vatican then turns around and says, well, you know what? I don't really want to be the, the first trustee of man because no one really wants to hold the sovereignty. Who really wants to be the king or who really wants to be the boss or the CEO of the corporation? Because the whole weight of it is on him, on his head. Same what's probably happened to the Queen. The Queen has simply become the first trustee. The first thing she did was she got rid of it and she gave it to a, another trustee, the Vatican. Then the Vatican, it turns around and offers to be the trustee of man because the Vatican knows how to convert man from the debtor. Uh, the Vatican knows how to convert man from his creditor into his debtor, and that's all it is. That all happens in um, in Adam and Eve, when on the tree, there's the tree of knowledge, oh sorry, there's the tree of life, and there's the tree of knowledge, which is the tree of death, or the tree of debt. And all the Vatican or the snake did was offered Eve the right to come from the creditor, to come over into the debtor. But what did he say? He said, the fruit, it tastes good, it's beautiful. And that's what Eve said when she ate the fruit, which has become the use of fruct, which is using the fruit of the debtor, which is really just the credit card. And once Eve had a taste of the credit card or the ability to borrow from the future, she thought, this is good, I like this, this is nice. But the only thing is that when you go there, at some point, you have to pay it back. And that's the whole guts of what's going to happen with this system. 
Now, this goes from God to man. Man grants the dominion, mineral energy wealth, the sovereignty of the planet to the Vatican. He becomes the first trustee. It's probably happened it also happened around 1213, or two, two years before the Magna Carta. I think it's the Treaty of Rome or something like that, where Rome has accepted to own everything on the planet. It has become the first trustee. And what happens then is that being the trustee, he's the first debtor. The Vatican must pay all the debts. And man then, the minute he accepts to act as trustee for man, man then comes right around down to here as the creditor. And all of his debts are paid by the Vatican, by Moloch, by the bull, by the, by the snake, by the serpent. And one would say, wow, why would anyone want to pay the debts of the world? And before we just go there, when this first happened, when man granted the dominion to the Vatican, when he handed the, the dominion on, God said, man has come like one of us. Simply meaning that man has become a grantor of the dominion. Man has become the beneficiary of the sovereignty of the planet. Man did it because God had it. He granted it to man. But man got wised up with it. And he thought, well, I'm going to grant this to someone else. So he grants it to the Vatican. Then the Vatican comes along and he then grants this debt to a new debtor. But the trouble is, man is the creditor, but the debtors over here are us. Where is man too? Because at the moment, all of you are paying the debts of the state. You don't have any rights. You're stuck in this crazy world where it's as if you are a crew member on a ship. And uh, when the magistrate, which is the Vatican, which is the captain of the ship, when he says jump and you don't jump, well, into the hold you go, into the prison you go. And you stay there until you get a fine and then you pay the debt. You can't come out until you pay the debt. Then everything you own, your houses, your cars, the whole lot, if you don't pay the rates on it, it doesn't matter how much you own your house, if you don't pay the rates, which is rent to the owners of the land. And how come you own the land, yet you've got to pay rates on land that you thought you owed? You owned. <laughs> but that's because the trick of the Vatican is that he converts man that has come down as the creditor. He's so clever that he tricks man from being the creditor over into the land of the debtors. And that happened at birth. When, when we were born, the state placed us over into this area first. And it wasn't, it wasn't that our, our, the, the state did it. It was because our mothers had granted us, we were the dominion, had granted us and gave us to the state to look after. And that only went, had, uh, th that time period was until the age of majority. The biblical age of majority for a man is 21. And that is how this trust works. So what happens is man grants the dominion to the Vatican. Then the Vatican, which is the, the trusteeship, which is the, the debtor, the one that pays all the debts, he's granted it to another party, another third party, which doesn't actually exist. There's man. There's God, there's man, there's the snake. So what is this thing down here? How come that we've come down into the debtors of this? Well, those things are called persons. And what the Vatican had to do is create, this is the true um, contract here. This is God and man, which is real. This is the realm, which means real. And this is the Vatican. What the Vatican had to do was create a new quasi one of these things down here, which is the mirror image of the Old Testament. 
and it is the world of the dead. It's the world of the fiction. It had to be created as a complete fictitious world that had nothing to do with reality whatsoever. But he had to make this world here look like a real world. <laughs> so, and that's why we can see over the last 30 or 40 years um, where our lands have become more under the control of the Vatican or the, uh, the Unidroid or the, um, the Treaty of Rome, which is the Unidroid Treaty of Rome, signed by Whitlam in 1973. And also, as I've said before, Kennedy didn't want to sign the Unidroid Treaty of Rome, handing the administrative uh, area of the United States over to Rome or the Vatican. So he got his brains, <laughs> he got his brains blown out over it, and then Lyndon B. Johnson then signs it over, and then the United States became uh, a signatory of the Unidroit Treaty of Rome in 1964, I think early 1964, whereas uh, Kennedy was shot or murdered in 1963. This is what's happening here, from land law into the law of the sea and this fictitious world this they had to create was a person not a man man lives up in this world but in this fictitious world here this is persons this world has no jurisdiction with man as a matter of fact man can't even enter into the their courts or enter into the ship and the reason why this is because the ho both the creditor and the debtor had to be set up in a fiction in order for man to benefit in this new quasi strange fictitious world of the dead and what Christ came along and did was that uh, he offered this world of the dead to us but he died for us in this world as a trustee so in 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 a way christ is here sits where moloch is christ is sort of moloch in a way he's lucifer he's he controls the world of the dead he's the one that sacrificed himself into this world in order to act as our trustee which is a which is strange but that that's what I mean in Matthew and what he did is he said in my name which is the Christian name he will save you but if you take which is over here this is the Christian side which is if you look on your birthing certificate you have two names on your state birth certificate you have a name and a surname your name is John Henry the surname is say Smith so what Christ did is he gave you a choice of two names. Would you like to have a Christian name or would you like to have a surname? It's up to you which one you would like to be birthed to. And that's why there are two birthing certificates. You see, this is the certificate of birth, which births you onto the Christian name. In my case, name in full. Here it is here, cross, which means dead, Christian name of child, which means dead name of child, which is written in all uppercase text, Romney Stewart. That's it, that's my name. The surname is not on this certi certificate, it's not there. But on one of these things, which is the state birth certificate, it gives you a choice of family name, which is your and which is and given name which is your christian name is a choice of two names smith john henry the certificate of birth which is the credit aside i'll just write that here this This one, the debtor. So this is the certificate of birth that births 
that gives you the option to be birthed with the Christian name, which is an all uppercase dead account. But that's what Christ created this for. And this side, which is the dead side, which is the crewmen on the ship to join over to the crew, you get this certificate, which has the two names on it, Smith and John Henry. It has a birth date of Smith up here, but down here has a birth date of John Henry. This birth here, which is called the uh, date of registration, is the creation of the setting up of the true birthing certificate. So on a ship, on this new Christian ship that you are on, which is this one here, which is over here on the ship, there's your choice. That's why on my last videos I'm saying you have two birthing certificates. That means there's two births. And a birth is the place where you park your ship. <laughs> A, the B-E-R-T-H is that, but a B-I-R-T-H is the birth of a person. Remember what I said up here? God, man, and the snake. But there are no persons up in the Old Testament, which is the reality, the wrong. But in the New Testament, which is a quasi, which is a, a, a total fiction that Christ had to create as a remedy for this, you have had to be changed from a man into a person. That's why you can't be a man in the system of Christ. Christ deals with persons. And a person is an incorporation. And the incorporation means that are you incorporated with the birth of Christ, the Christian name over here? Are you, are you incorporated with this birth of the Christ, which is the creditor of the ship, which is really the director of the ship, or which is the crew member, or which is the passenger of the ship, just enjoying the ride uh, for a holiday, really? So are you incorporated like a person is an incorporation? Are you incorporated with the creditor side of this trusteeship, or are you incorporated with the debtor side of this. See, that's what a person is. A person is the birth of an incorporation. But are you birthed with or incorporated with the debtor? Or are you incorporated with the creditor? And probably you start to wonder why the police officer says, you know, what's your name and date of birth? What's your name and date of birth? Because they want to know, are you John Henry or are you Doe? But if you give my name's John Henry Doe because you don't know what's going on, well then suddenly you will realise that, okay, the police officer's got John Henry in all uppercase there. He's got Doe in all uppercase. So he has two officers, the office of John Henry and the office of, of Doe. But you thought John Henry Doe was one, but it's not, it's two. It says here, family name Doe, or Smith, sorry, family name Smith, and given name John Henry. There's two. There's two names. It's, it's not one, it's two. So when you think you are John Henry Smith, not Doe, John Henry Smith, then are you two names? See, they start, so then they go, oh, this guy is an illiterate. He doesn't know what's going on. He's a lost soul. And then that's when they need your date of birth. Are you John Henry, birthed on the registration date? Or are you, Mr. Doe, birthed on the day you were born? And of course, when they ask you for your name, you've been so indoctrinated, you will say, my name's John Henry Smith and my date of birth is the date I was born. Well, the date of birth of your Christian name is not the date you were born. It's the date of registration. In my case, it was about a month after. These days, it gets a bit quicker, even down to even a few days. But when I was there, it had to go from Cairns to Brisbane. So it was about a month before they could get this document and fill out all of the, the real document. So the minute you, the police officer says to you, well, you know, your name is, my name's John Henry Doe, and, or John Henry Smith, and 
my date of birth is the born date. So he can straight away identify you with this certificate and not with this one. So this certificate is holding you as the debtor. So he knows that, that they can throw all the charges of the ship or of this, of this debtor system onto you because you are not holding the name that Christ gave you that he can save your ass with. And that's what he said. He said, I can save your ass with the Christian name. But if you have another name, he said, I can't find you. And you haven't really done your due diligence, I guess. And if you are surviving off the state of Moloch, that's the, the fiery god of hell, the, the, the bull, the Vatican, which is the calf that is the, the debtor. If you are surviving off him, then I guess you don't have the faith to stand with Christ. You don't have the faith to find this document. And this schematic, this plan, these plans are what's sitting on Old Testaments, on, on sorry, on, on Old uh, Masonic Bibles. And that's what this schematic is all about. Because once you come into this world down in here, which is the world of the New Testament, which is the one that Christ is looking after, Christ offered you to stay here as the creditor or at the age of 21 you can find your way back over into the creditor side but if you remain on the debtor side over here you are like a crew member on the Vatican ship and I can tell you something that Vatican ship is one harsh ship to be on the Vatican has been handling the law of the sea for thousands of years and what this is, once you've, been, once you've been brought down into this, once the Vatican offered man to act as the, the beneficiary of his trust, then you, you come down and sit over here. And then your mother really has thrown you over to here. But at the age of 21, you have the right to come back from there, back over onto this side of the trust. Which means that this side has holds the power of direction over the, the captain of the ship because you are in this area in this side you have the rights of the passenger and the thing about a passenger is on a ship is that even on the P&O or on the cruise liners that, that travel around the world it must be beautiful to go on one of them <laughs> I'll, I'll go one day um, to enter onto those cruise ships the passenger has a bill of right which is really the constitution of the ship of the trusteeship and that's where things start to shine in relation to when you're the debtor of this trusteeship or like a crew member on the ship then you don't have a bill of rights so the constitution of your country and if you, have, don't, if you don't have any rights to that constitution and you're holding the surname and you're holding the wrong birth, birthing certificates, such as the state birth certificates, well then this is the consent, this is the proof that you are no longer under the true constitution of that trusteeship, the true constitution of the state or the trusteeship called Commonwealth of Australia constitution you are not on this side. You don't get the benefit of it. You remain over on the debtor side holding the wrong birth certificate, holding the surname, which is a crew member on the ship. So all you've got to do is follow the orders of the captain until you return back to here. Now, what does this ship hold? The ship holds your equity, which is down here again. Um, when you went on to this ship here, God granted you the dominion. The dominion is the authority over the mineral and energy wealth of the ship. So when you come onto the ship, the Vatican then holds that and puts it into its hull. And it then administers your mineral and energy wealth while you are on that ship 
as the passenger. It's like your cargo on your boat, on the boat. When you get onto the ship, you give them your cargo and it administers it. It holds it, uses it as a usufructory term, I guess you could say, until the voyage is over. And, and in case of a voyage of life, I think it's a 70 year term. So when you hit 70, then you have the right to either leave the ship and reclaim your equity and whatever they've made profit out of it, remember the ship can't make the profit, but if they've made profit, then all of your mineral and energy wealth uh, royalties will be in that. But you can't get that back while you're a debtor, while you're holding the surname of this trust. To get this equity back that you granted to them in the first place, or that your parents did, or your mother did, when she's granted you them at the age of 21, the minute you come back to here, then you have the right to go back down into here to the captain and ask for your equity at the end of the trust or to even use it while you're on the ship. You have access to that, but only as the creditor and only as the director of this trusteeship. So all those people that are inside the state holding surnames and on benefits of the state, whinging and complaining about their rights being eroded. Their rights were not eroded. They never had any rights while they were sitting on this side of the ship. Remember, that's the port side. This is the side that aircrafts and everything, that's where you enter the ship. If this is an aircraft, that's the side that's all on. That's the side that, um, which is, is the port. That's the side where the crew members, uh, sorry, that's the side where the, the passenger gets on the ship, on the port side. That's the cargo side where you port the cargo off. But when you're on this starboard side here, that's the crew. They are not allowed to get off that ship. That's their jurisdiction on that ship. And if they want to come back to get off this ship, they can have liberty to leave the ship, but only on terms and conditions of the trustee ship. But if you want to leave this ship, you have to find your way back across over into here as the, crew, as the passenger on the ship. And then with, as a passenger, then you have the bill of right, just like a P&O cruise liner. You have the bill of right to then demand your estate, your equity, your mineral and energy royalty wealth back from the administration. He hands it back to you and you either can get off the ship or you can remain on the ship and keep on, stay on the ship as the director of the ship. But if you don't come back to this and if you don't sort this equity out and find sort and, and work out how this system goes you can never ever leave this ship and any person that's sitting down here holding surnames i think we've got a couple of them uh, people in in australia here trying to claim or one in new zealand trying to claim to be the king but the both of them are claiming to be king of australia and australia is the trust territory that belongs to the british admiralty Trust ter uh, the, the Australia has nothing to do with this land that we are standing on. This land is either Australasia or Terra Australis, but it is not Australia. And that was proved even in the statutes. I think it's the um, uh, Interpretations Act um, 1901, Section 2B. And it states what Australia includes, and it does not include Terra Australis or Australasia. Terra, uh, Australia is a, tr a trust territory of the Vatican. So anyone claiming to be the king or whatever of, the, of, the, of Australia is really a belligerent going against Moloch or even against Christ because this is his ship. It is not the ship of any sovereign thing here because the sovereignty was up here and it's been granted to Christ through here. It's, this is, you, you don't want, you don't want to be, you don't want to be sovereign. That's the last thing you want to be. Um, and you can't be sovereign while you're standing here. And the only real way get back to here is to know how to find that document and if you want to stand in this light in this document if you want to stand in this under this power 
then you cannot stand here. This is a choice. You can't be here and here at the same time. You can be here or here. But you can't be here and operate between these two because that's a fraud. This is a fraud anyway, but that's, that's a fraud. That's a theft. That's almost... And, and while you are a debtor on this ship, then you really have to obey the rules of the ship. If the magistrate says jump, or if the police say jump, you jump. But if you are over here and the magistrate or the police tell you to jump, oh, it can't happen. Because you are the creditor of the ship, which is the crew, which is the passenger of the ship. And without a passenger in this ship, then the ship has no ability to exist. The ship needs a passenger. The ship needs cargo to keep it, to give it a reason to exist. So you don't have a choice while you're here. So those people that are debtors and hold surnames and take any benefit from the state, then you do as you're told. I wished it was some other way. Or you do the fight from, is it from Kalamazoo to Timbuktu, the longest journey any man could ever take. It's getting from here to here. But sometimes you just have to do it. There's some strange stuff going on around the world at the moment. This is this One World Trust. There it is. That's the world, One World Government. It's a Masonic system be it that it's good or be it that it's bad the big thing you have to do is you just got to understand what it is because if you don't know what it is you know you, you you can't deal with it if you don't know what you're dealing with and this is very hidden this is why it's esoteric or occultism, occultism which means hidden or um gnostic with the hidden g you know in in this uh, masonic symbol which also means hidden or or only known to a few. It's a bit like the, the technician that can read the schematic on the Marshall guitar amp. Those few knowledgeable men that can read that sign or the language of that are the ones that know how the thing works. And all of us lame guitar players that just make the thing sound cool I have no idea what's going on with the symbols. Well, the mas Masonic system is is much the same type of a a thing you know and understanding and comprehending this what's happening in the world today is that the world is making you dependent on their system and when you become dependent on their system then you need this document which holds you in as the debtor and there's a very dirty trick at the very end of this system that they don't really ever want you to know. When you grant the equity to this Masonic system, it goes into the hull of their ship and you get put down into the debtor side of the ship. If you don't come back into the credit side of the ship after a certain amount of time, and if you die on this side of the ship and you are not aware that you were ever the passenger, you died as a crew member without ever knowing that this existed and without ever knowing your true name and your true date of birth which is the registration of this document if you don't know that then that means you will never write a will for the equity that's in this ship so that when you pass away as a debtor and never return back over to here as the creditor of this ship then your equity which is your treasury in law remains with the trustee, with the Vatican, with the snake, with Moloch, the fiery hell. Moloch was all about sacrificing the children. And the word birth and the word child here written as sign, birth, child. That means stillborn. 
So what this document is, is a sacrificing of the child into the belly of Moloch. Because this child has been born, stillborn, which means dead. This, it says, this child includes stillborn. So even though Moloch was the picture of the fiery bull, where they threw the children into the fire and rang the bells to hide the screaming of the child. This is what it says. This is what they used to do. This system is a symbolic system of sacrificing the child into the belly of the debtors of this system, this Moloch system. And only when you turn 21 can you have the right to get out of the fire of debt, out of the fire of debt into the peace of the cove of the calm of the creditor. So that document is the sacrificing of the child, the dead child in here. And while you are dead, you can't ever make a will on your equity. You can't, you can never leave a will to leave this come back to you or to your children or to whatever. So if you don't find your way from here back to the creditor, you can't make a will. And then when you die, all the mineral and energy royalties that have been paid into your trust account, into your Christian name, remains with the snake, remains with the Vatican, remains with the bull, remains with Moloch, remains with Satan. And that's why they want you dead. That's why there's so many wars that were created from World War I, World War II, and World War III that started in 1953. The silent war that was slowly poisoning and killing us all. Because they want us dead before we reach this certificate here. And as you know, the few people that have tried to get this and have gotten it, what did you go through to even get it? You were... You were shunned, you were told crap, you had to fight to get this certificate. Because this certificate here is the one that, where you realise you are waking up, that you are not just a, a crew member on a Vatican satanic Masonic ship. But if you come over to this side, you are on the ship, but you are the director of the ship. And being on the director side, you are out of the danger. The death zone of this ship and you have the right to either remain as a director because this captain of this ship he cannot do anything but obey your orders and they don't want to sink this ship they've got to keep it going so you have the power over the satanic thing or you can get off and you can take your equity and off you go so you have that power over that ship but you don't have that ship, that power over here in this credit, in the debtor side. You don't have that power while you hold that. And you don't have that power when that police officer asks you for your name and uh, date of birth. You'll say, John Henry Smith, and then give your born date. Oh, man, you're gone. That copper knows he's got you. But if that police officer can't get this information and you start giving this, that police officer, if he's dumb, he'll carry on. But if he's got any brains at all, he'll get back in that commercial vehicle that he's in because he's not even the government and you shouldn't see high high talent and get the hell out of there because this is the power and all he has to do all this one here has to do is send a notice to the the administrator who's the magistrate to charge that debtor and that debtor can never get back his equity while he's here and we have a trouble, that's a, one of the troubles we have with these new uh, so-called kings that are trying to claim kingship over this uh, thing called Australia or the, the thing called Britain or the, the British royals. The Queen's probably too happy, <laughs> probably too happy to give it away. Uh, the poor thing, <laughs> she's been the debtor for all these years and um, but has had to deceive everyone into this sort of system. But um, then we've got these other people that are from here that don't know anything about the reality of this. But like I say, the last thing you'd ever want to be is 
king or queen of anything to do with this system because this system is a trust territory it floats over the top of um, of this country of this land it's probably known as Terra Australis remember that that was known since 350 AD this country has been known, known about even Magellan I think he bumped into it sailing along in his tinny <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what's this? <laughs> and then, of course, the, the Doifken, which is the Dutch in 16 something. Why oh, one? 16. Early 1600s, 1500, 1600. And then old Lieutenant Cook, which is, again, you know, he didn't. People think that he made a claim over Australia. Well, he did make a claim over Australia because he knew darn well that Australia was not Terra Australis. That's why they called it Australia, because they didn't want to um, be accused of stealing anyone's country which he didn't and um this whole thing is zionism as i've said this symbol here is on the israeli flag zionism is the the journey from god into the debtor to hell and also the journey from hell back up to god and it there it is that's what it's all about. The other document is um, to read is Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. That's, that was supposed to be a deemed as a, as a fraud or as a hoax, but what I think it was, was the... Um, it was the schematic of a hoax. It was the plan of a hoax. The document itself was a true warning of a hoax. And uh, so Zionism, Masonic, the Masonic system are the sort of keys behind the schematic of the trusteeship of life. So that's a little bit what you've got to kind of know and the reason why the governments today want you so dependent on them. That's why they're sending everyone bust and broke because they don't want you to ever become on this side of the ship because while you are not there they steal all the equity the mining and energy wealth while you die in there and when you die in this you'll wind up in a cemetery with your full uh, incorporated the full name John Henry Doe written in all uppercase text which is the confirmation and, and then placed under a ledger which is the slab of cement that sits on top of a, a tomb once you're in there you can never come back so you've only got your living time here to find your way back from the debtor to the creditor to save your equity and to be able to get off this ship of, of satanic fire to get back. <laughs> death, symbol of death. These two triangles come together to form this this symbol is zionism which is the debtor and the creditor the old testament and the new testament